Thanks for downloading Pave the Way Podcast. On this show, your host, Greg Helbeck, interviews the top minds in real estate, business, and personal development to help you crack the code so you can grow your business and, more importantly, grow your life. Get ready for another game-changing episode. If you want to learn how to master your day and become a productivity monster, download Greg's free guide on daily personal productivity for free at www.pavetheday.com. That's pave the day spelled D-A-Y dot com. Now it's time for today's episode. Enjoy. David Richter, welcome to Pave the Way, man. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on, Greg. Well, I got to tell you, uh, we met in person for the first time, I think in November. Was that in November? My memory is not great. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We met at Investor Fuel. You're in all the, the, the top masterminds, so you're connected with some of the big dogs in the industry. And I got to say, man, I read your book and it is phenomenal. Profit First for Real Estate Investors. Uh, I read Profit First a while ago and I thought originally like they should make a real estate investing one and guess what happened there it is <laughs> there it is out of thin air so before we get into some principles in that book and and you know how real estate investors can ultimately be more profitable can you give the listeners just a brief background on, on who you are and how you got to this point yeah so i got handed the book a book changed my life so rich dad poor dad like a lot of entrepreneurs and real estate investors a uh, good friend in college gave me that book. And from there, you know, like my mindset was unlocked. So I bought a house almost immediately after that. This was 2012. So I bought my first house on 12, 12, 12 and haven't looked back. So that's, you know, lease option that property and did some really cool things. And that's where it got me interested in real estate and like actually doing more deals. So I linked up with a real estate investing company that we grew from like five deals a month to 25 deals a month. And, you know, like we were doing wholesale, wholesale, turnkey, fix and flip, you know, lease options, rentals, like anything in between. So I got to see a bunch of different deal types as well. Then I also sat in all the seats because I wanted to learn the business too. And kind of yeah. like the utility, man, let's put you in a seat, fix it, and then move on. So acquisition, selling the properties, you know, project management, property management, finance, transaction coordination, anything you could think of you know, I sat in the seats in that company. So it was like, it was a, it was a ride for sure, but that's kind of what got me started in real estate investing. And then, you know, I, it's been a ride since there as well too, but that's kind of my background, how I got into real estate investing and, you know, just working and uh, being around good people, good investors. That's awesome. And that's a great way to learn that a lot of people like over, like they kind of like oh, yeah. they get and they pass it by. They're like, Oh, I don't want to work for somebody else. It's like, you'll learn so much. You'll get paid to learn. And you'll know more in two years of doing that versus trying to bash your head into the wall. When I got started, I worked for a few investors briefly um, to learn the business, right? And it made a lot of sense. And they're still really good friends of mine today. We still do business together. And just learning on someone else's dime and quite frankly, getting paid to learn, it, it, there's nothing quite like it. So yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up because I hope that inspires some uh, people maybe who are new listening to the show that like, there's another way besides doing it all yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. And during that time too, I'd buy some of the properties from the company, you know, and like build a little portfolio for myself. So it was like, there's a lot of great benefits, what you learn, what you can actually implement during that time. So it's, it was a really good experience. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, let's get into the book and, 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 you know, the, the profit first, you know, principles and philosophy. I remember reading the book before I started doing like real business and I was like, oh, this is going to be really applicable when I start actually closing a lot of deals. So I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for the profit first, you know, real REI, you know, all that strategy, I mean, there's no way I'd have the financial situation I have now, because I'll tell you what, ever since I started closing deals, I allocate money. I just literally did it this morning on a big deal. We just did a condo property. Every time I make money, doesn't matter if it's a hundred thousand or if it's 10,000, I allocate that money up. I chop it all up. And I have all the different accounts and dude, it has just done a magic for my net worth, my liquidity, like all that stuff, because it's all in order. So I got to say, man, thank you so much for being able to promote this idea of financial behavior, because I mean, it's literally changed my life. And I know everyone's tool, it's changed my life. It's a game changer, all that shit. I'm telling you the truth, bro. Financially, it has set me up like knock on wood to be very healthy. So yeah. thank you. Seriously. It's, it's so powerful, bro. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking 
and then running with it. You know, that's yeah. what that's what the whole message is about. <laughs> so that's why I want to pound the pavement with it and get it out there as much as possible. Yeah, dude. Well, how did you end up, you know, getting connected with Mike and writing the book? I mean, that's super interesting how you even, you know, got to do that. So I'll go back to when I was working in that company. We took it to like to 25 deals a month, but one of the last seats I sat in was the finance seat. And we were making, you know, six, seven figures a month sometimes and then spending that much too. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Like, this is just like, why are we doing so much if if we're not going to see an actual benefit from it? And that's where I, that's where it first turned me on to like something's wrong here. And so at that point too, I'd built a little portfolio, sold it all, moved across the country, started working with another investor and want to be closer to family. So that's where I started working with him. First thing was like, show me your numbers. Like I, you could tell me a lot of stuff about your business, but the numbers don't lie. So like, let's, yeah. let's look at the business and, you know, lifted up the hood and there was no engine, you know, like there were no numbers, you know, there really wasn't uh, numbers in place and he was doing well, but just no clarity around what he was doing. So that's where cleaning up that stuff. And then from there, able to get him to where we um, saw that where his numbers were with all his rental properties, he had a portfolio and he had poured a lot of his own money into the rentals and was only leveraged at like 30%. So 30% loan to value on his properties. And he's like, well, there's where all my money went. You know, they're in these properties here. So he refinanced got hundreds of thousands of dollars of his own money back into his pocket. And was like, this has been life changing. Like I now know the numbers. So I feel more in control. And like, now I have this cash so I can go out and do what I need to, or want to with it to, you know, invest more, whatever I want to do. So that to me was a big light bulb moment of like, I got to help investors with this. So then that's where I thought of the company, simple CFO. And that's where I called a mentor, Gary Harper, and told him like my idea of like starting this company. He said, I think it would be a great idea, but you need to read the book Profit First if you haven't. So mm. I was like, what's that? <laughs> so I read that book that night, downloaded it, took 10 pages of notes, finished it in one evening and said, this is it. This is the framework. I love the framework. I understand it. This is what I want to you know, incorporate with the real estate investors I work with. So that's when we started implementing it through Simple CFO and helping people, you know, with that was the cash flow management, one of the pieces of our business to help people. And that's where I saw like now, we're, like exactly what you were saying, people feeling in control, feeling like their net worth is growing, doing the things that they want to do. So then I reached out to Mike, like almost a year later and said, Mike McCowitz, the author of Profit First and reached out to him and said, Hey, you know, I think there needs to be a book for the real estate investing world because it's so nuanced and not, not a Very typical niche. business, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not a typical business. So that's where he was like, I totally understand. Yes, I agree. Let's do it. So that's where the book came to fruition. And now that was 15 months ago. So now 15 months later, the book is out the door and we have it out there and getting that message out more and for the real estate investing community specifically. But that's kind of how it came to be. Uh, was seeing actual investors and seeing it turn around and being like, I got to get this message out more. Dude, it's such a good book and it's so easy to read and simple to execute. So I encourage all the listeners, obviously, to go pick it up on Amazon now that we, as we record this, it's actually, you know, like published and launched. So yep. there's a few questions I have for you because, yeah, you, you you made a good point like a minute ago, like the real estate business is a very it's a niche business and it's oh, it's yeah. a business where like I have found like, you can make a lot of money, but you can really get yourself in trouble because the way the sales cycle is, and AKA the cash flow cycle, especially if you're renovating properties, you can get walloped. Like you could make $60,000 in one cash event, but that could be six months. So essentially you're making 10 grand a month, but people yeah. are spending money like they're making 60 grand a month. So what do you see? Like, how do you, when you work with a client, when your company works with a client, what do you guys do to like, make sure that they they try their best to avoid having these giant revenue increases and then these big droughts because consistency is is huge in this business and i found like you know the rentals that i have don't make a lot of profit but they're consistent and yeah, the flipping sure. is consistent now but it used to be crazy inconsistent so like what do you guys do to kind of mitigate that because this business is a very weird business in the sense of how the cash flow works that's where incorporating a system like profit first yeah. it helps to even out that cash flow because now you're thinking in terms of instead of living deal to deal it's like okay what do i need before my next deal and do we have enough to cover that so i'm not scrambling 
you know, come, you know, next deal time or like if something yeah. falls through, you know, and having yeah. those reserves. So it's like getting some simple systems in place, like profit first to help even out that cash flow. So that way we're not always on the, riding that roller coaster of like rich one day, poor the next, like what the heck is happening here? So that's why we do this. That's why we incorporate it. Dude, that's so true. I actually have two accounts in the in the main real estate account. I have a operations account, like for the overhead, that's not even that much. And then I have a marketing account. So I have two different accounts yep. because I don't want to feel like my operating account, air quotes, is diminishing because of the marketing spend. Because the marketing takes a while to convert, right? So I have a marketing account and an operations account. So like if the marketing account gets low, I know it's going to become high again because the money I'm spending on marketing is obviously producing a return or also going to be spending it. So that's like a little hack, for example, like a little profit first hack. I started doing actually this year. I didn't do that for a while. And that alone has been very helpful because I don't feel like I'm on this hamster wheel of like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? with all this? Every time I make money, it's personally allocated into separate accounts. And that's why I feel like I'm in a lot of control over my financial situation, you know? Yeah, exactly. And if you don't mind, do you mind if I go into the core of profit first for people? Who I'd, might love, I'd love for you to go into it. Yeah. So there's two main parts. So that way you, I want you to feel control. If you're listening to this, the control that Greg feels, that's exactly what this book is about is helping you get that clarity and that control where the financial side is probably the one biggest thing that entrepreneurs struggle with because we're not trained on it. We're not trained yeah. on the financial side. Like we are marketing sales operations. You know, it's like, there is no simple system out there until now with profit first, but it's like up until this point, it's just been like, what in the heck is going on? So profit first is made up of two major things, the mindset and then the practical application. How do I actually do this? So the mindset, we're real estate investors. We love our formulas, but we've been fed a horrible formula. Sales minus expenses equals profit. Meaning I make a sale, I pay everyone else and their mother. And then what I have left over is my profit at the end of the day or the end of the year, or like some event off in the future that hopefully one day comes to fruition. So that's where we're fed that. And then we get into bad habits. We're paying everyone else. And then we're left to suck air for ourselves, you know? So that's where if we get into those bad habits, that just creates a whole nightmare as you grow in scale too. If you're oh, in those habits. Chaos, man. Right. You're done. Exactly. Because yeah. you're scaling your problems. You don't scale your way out of problems. <laughs> you scale your problems. So yeah. that's where having a system like this, the profit first formula though, is sales minus profit equals expenses. Meaning I make a sale. I take my profit first off the table. Then what I have left is for the business to operate and then doing things like Greg's doing and separating it out even more, which is, in, which is awesome. So that's where that mindset of taking that profit first. You probably heard this though, if you're a real estate investor in different ways, like Robert Kiyosaki, pay yourself first or the richest man in Babylon, a portion of all I have is mine to keep. Like we hear that message from everywhere. That's why I love profit first because it takes it this step further of like, here's how you do it. Here's how you pay yourself first. Here's the practical steps. So let's get into that side and make the mindset now a reality. So how do we do that is exactly what Greg was talking about. The biggest mistake I see investors make is they have one big bank account where all money goes in, all money goes out, and it's a cash salad that keeps getting tossed around all the time. One day you feel like a king because all the money came in. You feel like a king or queen. The next day it's all gone because marketing's run and all this, you know, all the other things have ran, payrolls run, and now you have no money in the account. You're like, where, what the heck do I do? So that's where a lot of people feel out of control because they don't know with that one account, where's my money going? What's it for? I tax, tax season's coming up. I got to pay my taxes. Where the heck am I getting that money for? Oh. So, you yeah. know, so yeah, so that's where a lot of people feel that stress of what, you know, like, I don't know where my money is. So I tell people and like what the, the core of profit first is to, you know, it's the envelope method. If you've heard of that, the envelope system, like for your personal finances and, you know, to separate out your money into different envelopes, same thing, but for on the business side, but with bank accounts. So I always say separate out these accounts so that way you can know exactly where these, you know, these dollars need to go. So there's, let me go over the five fundamental accounts and you say five, just stick with me. I'll make sure that it's worth your while in the end. So the first three accounts that I like to make sure that you have open, I call the golden trio. I write about it in the book. I'm a very big movies, big saga, epic story type person. So I like Star Wars, Harry Potter, all that stuff. So I like Luke Han Leia always moving the story forward for good, you know, like making sure good wins in the end. 
Well, your business, your real estate investing business is your epic saga. It's your story. So like you need three accounts that always make sure you win in the end. And that's where those three accounts are the profit account, the owner's compensation account, and the owner's tax account. So those accounts are for the benefit of the owner. And they have very specific functions. The first one is profit. And that's something you take quarterly where you, this is totally for you to feel like the business owner and rewarding yourself for the blood, sweat, tears, the hours that you traded working 40 for someone else and working now 80 for yourself. You know, it's like, this is the reward of like, now I feel like the business is truly serving me. The second one, the owner's compensation is for you as the business owner to pay yourself a regular salary or a regular draw or compensation for the work you do in the business. So paying yourself like weekly or biweekly or monthly or whatever on a regular consistent basis. So that way the business is supporting you. You don't have a business unless it can pay you. So I know not everyone needs a lot or a little or whatever, but it needs to consistently pay. Then the owner's tax account. That's like we were just remarking here with Greg, like, yeah, tax time comes. So instead of having just, you know, the one account where you have no idea and you have no idea where your tax money is going to come from, have a tax account for your taxes. So that way you can pay the taxes and not have to worry about it come tax time. If you have rentals, you might maybe get that down to zero, but you still should have something going in there. So that way you can cover it, you know, because business just general taxes or for your personal taxes as well. So those are the three fundamental ones that will change your business and change your life because they're for your benefit. Up to this point, you've probably been in the habit of paying everyone else and thinking of yourself last. And that creates the most stress in your business, probably your home life, other people, maybe you have a business partner or a spouse, you know, or someone that's always ragging you on the financial side. Those three are for to help you. Then the fourth, the fourth one is the income account or control account where all money comes into and sits there. It's a holding bucket for you then to push it out to those other accounts. So once you sell a property or you get rental income or whatnot, it comes into that one account and then you're pushing it out to those other accounts. So that way now you know everything that's coming in and you're telling the money where to go instead of the money always telling you where to go. So now you're in control of that process. Then the fifth account is the one you already have set up. It's the OPEX account, the operational expenses to pay the expenses of the business. So then once you have that in place, you are now fulfilling and making it a habit of being a profitable company. Because the whole, the whole purpose of this is not to just get you to open bank accounts. It's to get you into the habit of being profitable on every deal or every rental income or whatever, making sure that from all income, you are separating it out. So that way you feel that you're the good business owner and it's serving you, but then it's also helping you with the making sure that you have enough for the expenses. Or if you want to invest more in marketing, that you have those dollars available as well too. Biggest objection I always get is that's a lot of bank accounts. I'm like, okay, well, did you not hear what the first three are for? They're for you. But besides that, it's this objection of the bank accounts, at least set up one account, call it profit and transfer 1% of income. Just do that. Just get into the habit of being profitable. And I promise a year later from now, if you're, you know, you can look back on this podcast if you did it and say, this is why I have more money than I've ever had before in my business because you know, I, I at least got into that habit that you know, I just set up the one account and transferred 1%. So if you can do that from this podcast, I promise you will see more actual cash profit in your future and you will get addicted to it. You'll get addicted to that habit. And this is a good habit to get addicted yeah. to of actually having cash profit in your business. Dude, that's so true. And I'll tell you what, bro. I have, since I started doing this heavily, like I started doing like real business in 2018, bro. Yeah. The amount of cash I have saved just from this habit alone it has been, it, it's, it's unexplainable because when you know you're getting like a 30K payday and you know exactly how to divide that up, you're literally changing your financial future every time you do that. Because mm. the last yeah. thing I see, and I have friends who do this, they have all their money in the one account and I go, hey buddy, where's your tax account? Like, I don't have a tax account. I said, well, when you get a tax bill, what are you gonna do? Said, I'm gonna pay it. And I'm like, dude, why, why don't you just put it to the side? Just put it to the side. Let it sit there. And then if you want to use it for the year to buy some properties, which is what I do, just make sure you pay it back. But like, don't put everything in one account. You're going to think it's it's such a poor way to run a business, especially like, you know, I operate in some tough markets where like, you know, we'll go sometimes a month or two without getting a deal done, but then we'll make, you know, six figures. So like, right. you have to be, if you just implement what David talks about, I'm telling these, and this is why I'm so passionate about this, because if you just execute what he says, I'm telling you, it'll make a difference, even if you're beginning, because once you start making money, this will be a habit once and for all. 
And the objection you said about the bank accounts, dude, I go, I, I don't even bank at a small bank. I bank at Chase. I think I have like 15 accounts because I have like tax accounts and old yep. accounts. It's insane. And then they're all linked up. It's worth going through the headache. It takes one day to do that. Right. One day. And then you don't have to mess with it. It's like totally worth a pain. I mean, listen, if you have rental properties, that's 10 times more stressful than going to Chase and opening up 17 bank accounts. Because a lot of the bank accounts, you don't even need your business. You, it's like your personal account, this account, the business account, that's, you need an EIN number and that's it. Yep. And your operating agreement or your, your uh, article, sorry. That's it. So like, it's worth doing it because you'll be able to shuffle that money around so easily. And it's, it's like, that's just such a lame objection, by the way. People, oh, don't want to oh, think yeah. you want to be broke. Like, what's the alternative? You know, I always exactly. say that. Well, what is the alternative? You know. Yep. Oh, living man. in the rat race, living deal to deal. Right. Let me ask you this now: on the, um, you did a great job explaining the whole profit first, you know, system. Yes. In, in your opinion, you know, you work with a lot of different companies, probably from smaller to bigger. Yeah. It, if you're doing fix and flip wholesale transactional based business, look, rentals are different. What do you think a reasonable profit percentage of overall revenue is? That, that, that means the company is actually like able to sustain itself. Because I have friends who will profit 60%. And I got friends who profit 5% and they're doing the same thing. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, I don't know why there's such a big delta there. What is, what's a good benchmark? Like, if you're doing- I was going to say, because we have to be speaking the same language though. And a lot of people don't know the language to speak. Are they talking about profit as in of their gross profit? Yeah. And it's on, yeah. a, on a, on a, well, even that, like, is that on the PL? Is that money oh, in your account? True. Is that that's cash? True. You know, it's like, that's that where true. you have to know. And are they calculating what they're paying themselves? Because mm -hmm. think about it, like in profit first, you separate out those three accounts, but that's really profit. All of it is profit, it's all profit. profit what it's you pay yourself and the taxes you're yeah. just saving it for different reasons yeah so like, Dude, I never thought in, of that. that's so true exactly that's why I, I get this question a lot and i'm like we have to be talking the same language because when they say they're 60 percent profitable that's probably paying themselves with yeah. and and saving for profit and like the taxes as well too so that's where okay 60 percent is great now for i would say profit after paying yourself after all of that, after everything, yeah, and so not including paying taxes, not including yourself, 10 to 15% is healthy. You know, like yeah. that's healthy. So if you can beat that and, you know, and you could do 30, 40, 50% net, net after paying yourself, you're an elite business. You know, like you have an elite and efficient business. So that's why wholesalers, wholesalers can usually get, even after paying themselves, like 40, 50%, 60% yeah. sometimes, you know, like even after paying themselves um, yeah. inside of their business, but it's very transactional. So, I mean, you have to make sure you're always that that system is always going, you're getting the consistency of the deal flow. But besides that, yeah, people can go that route. But I would say after you pay everything, most businesses try to be in that 10 to 15%. Anything lower than that, you're getting really, you know, it's going into the scary territory of like, we're, why are we even doing this business? Yeah, yeah, because it becomes worth it. You're doing de for de for deals for free, you know, and it's like you might- Exactly, as well we're paying out. for them. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Now, when you have clients, do you try to like, wholesaling in my opinion is is a better business than i think i've done rehabs i still do them but I, the, there's two things about rehabbing and wholesaling that i don't like number one you have to borrow money usually to earn revenue with wholesaling you create money out of thin air number two there's a lot more things out of your control when you're selling a property retail that can f up your cash flow versus a buyer backing out and then having to get a new buyer so do you try to advise your clients to, to kind of have a healthy mixture of both because of the, the big risk that renovating can usually do? And at least on my end, I've had properties where like, I thought I was going to get paid right away. And like, we got locked up with a buyer and like, it got bad. And I'm, I could have wholesale this for 70 grand and I'm trying to be an idiot to make a hundred, you know what I mean? It's like, and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, so that's right. why in San Diego, I just wholesale. Cause it's just like way easier. You yeah. know, that depends a lot on the owner. You, we have to know what we have to know our owners because if they're a good operator owner and like they're better at the operations of a rehab or a hotel or or they run crews well and they've got like 10 of them and they're already you know it's like it really depends on that owner what their strengths are because like wholesaling is very much marketing driven so are they a marketing oh, yes. owner 
that yeah. is that is very good at the marketing and can set up a small team to do a, a lot of deals. Cause like there you can scale by marketing, you know, the marketing engine and oh, yeah. how efficient you can be there on the rehab side. Are they the people person? Are they the, op, I mean, the operation side? Cause they, and they're not the marketing person and, or they don't have a good marketing team. Then sometimes we don't advise going the wholesale route because maybe they are better at that specific mm. thing, but in our opinion, yes, wholesaling is better for the cash generator, you yeah. know, just in general, as a general, you know, rule of thumb. But that's where once you know your numbers, we had a client we worked with, we where once he knew his numbers, he stopped rehabbing because he was better at the wholesaling. And like you said, you're killing himself to make a hundred when 70,000 would have been just fine for a wholesale deal. And, you know, three months sooner, you know, on a payday. Yeah. So that's where once you know your numbers, it puts you in control of, am I better at wholesaling? flipping rentals. Like what is my best return on my time and my money? Totally, man. I have some friends who did the same thing. They're yep. in CD. They're like, dude, I just stopped rehabbing. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah. I'm like, wow. Cause they were all rehabbers. And then they're like wholesale yep. now. Like, dude, it's just so much better. But I mean, listen, wholesaling, there's pros and cons. Uh, I always say to people, I always say the wholesale, like, like new investors, it's a very like attractive model for someone who doesn't have any money. Right. And I'm like, I think wholesaling, like I've done hundreds of them. I think actually, like if you don't know what you're doing, rehabbing is obviously dangerous, but wholesaling, you can get yourself in just as much trouble because oh, yeah. you're in the middle. So you're, you're in a weird, you have to be really good at communicating and negotiating because when you're in the middle, nobody likes you making 50 grand. Like, so I've told new investors, like, listen, you got to go into this business with your eyes open. Cause if you think wholesaling is easy and you're going to make real money, like seven figures, you got another thing coming for you. You're going to have to really, you know, learn the hard way because wholesaling is, is literally not even real estate. It's just, it's, you're just marketing and it's, it's, it's a totally different business. So I just tell new investors, go in with your eyes open. It's very profitable, but you got to really have the right expectations because if you're going to buy a property and flip it, it it's more straightforward. There's more things that can yeah. go wrong, but it's simple. It, wholesaling gets jacked up in the middle. Anyway, I digress. Uh, we're not here to talk about wholesaling. <laughs> so let me let me ask you this now. Yeah. With your 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 company, I want to sort of wrap the show up now. Yeah. With sure. your company, Simple CFO Solutions, like who's your like what what's your your main objective when you're working with clients, like with your with your team? What are you guys really looking to accomplish high level with the people that you know enroll you guys to help them? Sure. So with everyone that comes through our doors, we cut we do 60 days of laying a financial foundation meaning at least getting them to square one of like, do you have your numbers in place? Do you understand them? Do you have the reports? Do we build a CFO dashboard? Like here's the things that you need to be tracking and watching. Also start to implement profit first as well too, if they don't have that in place. So getting their numbers in order so that way they can make better decisions and then getting the, the cash in order so they can feel in control. So those are the two things we do with every company that comes through our door up front. Then from there on a recurring basis with a lot of people that we work with, it is about let's talk about the numbers. What are the actions we're going to take from this? And how are we going to make turn this into either more revenue or you know less expenses or you know like keeping more money and like transforming it to like the long-term wealth building strategies, like using active money to buy passive investments, you know, or like yeah. the passive side. So that's what we do with the people that come through our door. We always have that first 60 days of like, we got to at least lay the foundation. Then from there, it's kind of more the customized of like, what are we going to do together to make sure you have what you need? That's right. It's like building a house, man. You got a bad foundation. You're going to have a bunch of problems with your house. Ask me how I know. Cause I right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. still have the dead animals underneath the floors in one of these things. So anyway, oh, story for another day. Well, David, listen, man, this has been a ton of fun. If people want to, number one, pick your book up, number two, check out your company online, and number three, connect with you, what are the best three ways for them to do all three of those things? I know well, that was a good question. I try and keep it very simple. There's one way to do all three of those. Oh, S dude. Simple. CFO solutions.com. So simple CFO solutions.com. It has a link to the book there, a link to our podcast, just of a bunch of people who have implemented profit first. We're going to have Greg on in the new year. So excited about that. Yeah, We're also, yeah. that's also where you can connect with me on like LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, Instagram. I've got my links there. And then that's also where we have 
how to work with us and what we do as well too. So that's the one-stop shop for everything. Simple CFO and Profit First for Real Estate Investing. In Sweet. Neighborhood. Well, Anna, we'll put all that in the show notes so people will be able to connect with you. And man, it's been a pleasure having you on my show. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas with your family and uh, we'll connect in January for my pod or for your podcast. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for listening to another episode of Pave the Way Podcast. We hope you got value from today's episode. Make sure you download Greg's free guide on daily personal productivity for free at www.pavetheday.com. That's pave the day spelled D-A-Y dot com. If you have any questions or want to reach out, head over to www.pavethewaypodcast.com. We'll see you on the next episode.